I've always enjoyed flying. I learned to fly on a Piper Cub on floats and was interested in a lake amphibian, but I could never afford one in university. And around 1971, late 71, I got an article from Copa, and I was told about Malt Taylor, who had this home-built amphibian called the Coot. And I was very interested in that, sent for the plans immediately, and as soon as I saw them, I thought, well, it's not a three-year coot, it's at least a five-year, and of course it ended up being 11 years. But I did finish it and flew it for 100 hours, and uh, eventually sold it and traded up to um, an even better coot. Around 2011, my wife said to me, Richard, you, you're driving a hybrid car, you get good fuel mileage, but that coot of yours only gets 10 miles to the gallon, and it's very, very noisy. And, and I recognized that she had a point. And I had had a lot of fun flying my two coots for 28 years, so I sold it to a, a physician in, in New Brunswick, Canada. I started looking around for electric plane. And it was uh, a difficult four years. But finally, I, I ran into Mark Beerley, and uh, the rest is history. This plane came uh, six months later after I was just about ready to give up flying altogether. And it's given me enormous joy for the past five years. In 2008, the bottom dropped out of a lot of markets, including the ultralight market, and he'd all long been interested in electric propulsion of aircraft, and he felt that this plane was an ideal uh, candidate for electric power. And so he started working with zero electric motorcycles, and he managed to, which I thought was a brilliant idea, get them to work with him well enough so that he could take the wiring, the, the controller, the computer, the battery, and the motor as a unit and transplant them from a motorcycle into a plane like this. And it worked very, very well. Having had some difficulties with other electric aircraft where you pick various parts here and there and they didn't often match, uh, I recognized the importance of that, not only for efficiency, but for safety. So um, I was very happy to, um, to get involved with Mark. I trusted him and uh, felt that he was a good, um, fair individual and very supportive. And so since I've been flying, Mark has come by every summer on the way to Oshkosh and we've done some little experiment or other, uh, sometimes making it more efficient by tightening the cowling around the motor, which is much narrower and smaller when you switch from an internal combustion engine, so there's a lot of fairing to do. Um, uh, extending the wings and most recently putting on a new propeller, the DUC propeller from France. And each one of those has had significant improvements in efficiency and in range, so that, plus I increased the battery from 11.4 kilowatt hours to 14.4 kilowatt hours as zero increased their batteries too. So all four things helped. So now I can fly easily for an hour at comfortable speeds in the neighborhood of uh, uh, 50 to 60 miles an hour very quietly. You do hear the propeller, but less so with this DUC propeller because it's so much more efficient in the air. There's less to be concerned about in, with an electric motor. The power input and the reserve, they're easy gauges to read, and that's only two I have to look at, compared with all the things that you have to look at with an internal combustion engine, so it's simpler. I think that, that uh, more people should consider electric flight. I feel myself uh, a strong environmentalist. I'm very concerned about climate change and carbon um, emissions, and, and so it's much cleaner than, uh, than a conventional engine.